Hello again. This is our video solution to problem three from Super Quiz 3. And this is actually going to be a series of problems, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, where in each one we're given a series and we have to decide whether it converges or diverges. What I'm going to do in this video is actually show you several different ways to show that this particular series converges. In fact, I'll show you three different ways. The very first way is the one that, as I was looking through the exams, is the one that most people wanted to use first, which is the alternating series test. So method one will be the alternating series test. Uh, and what almost certainly gave it away that you could use the alternating series test is, oh, look at this. You have this minus 4 to the n. We could break this up as minus 1 to the n times 4 to the n. And you see, ooh, minus 1 to the n. That's what we called an alternator. And as soon as you see an alternator, you might consider checking to see if you can use the alternating series test. Now, to use the alternating series test, remember there are some conditions. Okay, you have to actually check that certain things happen. So what are the things we need to check? What are the conditions? So the conditions are that the underlying sequence without the alternator. So first, if I look at 4 to the n over n plus 2 factorial, that this should be eventually decreasing. So we want this to be eventually decreasing. It's okay if it increases for a little bit, all right, it goes back and forth, but eventually this needs to be a decreasing sequence. And this isn't so hard to see uh, what's happening here. Let's write down a few terms. So at first you're getting four. Okay, well actually, well the first time when n is zero, we're actually getting one over uh, two factorial. All right, now the next time Right, when n is equal to 1, we're going to get 4 over 3 factorial. And the next one is 4 squared, but actually I'm just going to write this as 4 times 4 over 4 factorial, which I could rewrite this as 4 over 3 factorial times 4 over 4. Okay, 4 factorial is 3 factorial times 4, and then, of course, I have 4 times 4 on top. And already I can see that between the second term and the third term, actually, there was no change at all because I just multiplied by 1. And what happens in the next term? Well, the next term would be 4 times 4 times 4 over 5 factorial. And I can rewrite that. Okay, I'm going to put this back into this form. It's 4 times 4 over 5. 4 factorial times 4 over 5. Because 4 factorial times 5 is 5 factorial. And you see at this point already this is less than 1. So in the beginning it was not actually decreasing. Uh, it was actually uh, maybe even going up a little bit and then it stayed the same and then ah, then it starts to go down. And in fact at this point it's always going to go down. Why? Well, because this numerator is always going to be a 4, and the denominator is going to increase by 1 each time. So the next one would be multiplying by 4 over 6, then 4 over 7, 4 over 8, etc. You're always multiplying by, though, a number smaller than 1, and that means you're going to be smaller than the previous term in the sequence. Okay, so we know that when n is at least... So let's see, in this case, we're in the n equals uh, 3 situation. So when n is at least 3, the term, right, or the, the sequence term, right, 4 to the n over n plus 2 factorial, I can write that as 4 to the n minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times, okay, and now we'll have 4 over n plus 2. And because n is at least 3, we know that n plus 2 is at least 5, which means that this number here is less than 1. And so this product is less than 4 to the n minus 1 
over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so that's the, the rigorous proof. Okay, cool. So we have verified that this underlying sequence without the alternator is eventually decreasing. But that's not the only condition. The other condition we need, so condition 2, is that 4 to the n over n plus 2 factorial converges to 0. Now, a good way to see this is to actually use what we did up above. Not only did we know that we can write down right, the, the terms uh, like 4 to the n over n plus 2 factorial, right, the terms in our sequence as a product, and not only did we know that one of those factors was less than 1, but we actually know that this factor does go to 0 as n goes to infinity. So if we think about this, one sequence is actually being a product of two sequences. So we have four, I have a sequence, I'm going to call it 4 to the n minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. There's a sequence. And I have another sequence, which is going to be 4 over n plus 2. And this sequence converges to 0. Now, how do I know that this other sequence converges? Well, it's actually the same sequence that we had already. And I know this one converges by the monotone convergence theorem, right? And or even this one does converge to something because we know that it's a decreasing or at least eventually decreasing sequence. And it is bounded by zero, right? We know that this thing is always positive. So by the monotone convergence theorem, this does have to converge to something, right? So this converges to something positive even. Uh, by monotone convergence theorem. Okay, so you have something it's converging to over here. This is converging to zero. And we have a result which says when you have two sequences and they both converge and you multiply them together, then their product is going to converge to the product of the limits. So in this case, the product is going to converge to zero right? Because this converges to zero. Okay, but the product of these sequences is precisely the sequence we have up above. Therefore, the sequence we want converges to zero. Okay, so this tells us we have a sequence which is eventually decreasing and, a, and it which converges to zero. And therefore, the corresponding alternating series must converge. Okay, so this converges by alternating series test. All right, so that is method one. Now, for those of you who were using the alternating series test, of course, it's a good intuition. You see an alternator, probably a good idea. Take a look, see if you can use the alternating series test. However, there's probably a lot more work being done here than you expected, right? And maybe even more than you did. So let's look at some other methods that might make this a little bit easier. So method number two, method number two is going to be the ratio test. Okay, and I'll copy this series down here. So we had n goes uh, from zero to infinity, and then we have minus four to the n over n plus two factorial. So to use the ratio test, I'm going to take the limit, as n goes to infinity, of the n plus first term divided by the nth term, and then I'll take the absolute value. So the n plus first term will be minus 4 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus 2 factorial. Okay, so this is going to be n plus 3 factorial. And then I'll multiply by the reciprocal, actually, of the nth term. I'm supposed to divide by the nth term, but that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So up here I'll have n plus 2 factorial over minus 4 to the n. And a nice thing about the ratio test is those absolute values are going to make that minus irrelevant to us. All right, so let's see here. Let's rearrange this a little bit and see what the absolute values do. So first, we have these minus 4 to the n plus 1 and minus 4 to the n. The minuses are going to go away, and I'll be left with 4 to the n plus 1 over 4 to the n. And then I also will have this n plus 2 factorial 
over n plus 3 factorial. And the absolute values aren't needed over here because everything is non-negative, even positive. Okay, well, I guess we can do a little more simplification. So here I have n plus 1 fours divided by n fours. So I just get a 4. And then over here, I have n plus 2 factorial over n plus 3 factorial. And n plus 3 factorial is just n plus 2 factorial times n plus 3. So n plus 3 factorial is n plus 2 factorial times n plus 3. All right, you just multiply all the numbers from 1 up to n plus 2, and then multiply by n plus 3, and now you've multiplied all the numbers from 1 to n plus 3. So most of this is going to cancel. The only thing I'll have left is a 1 over n plus 3. Now this 4 doesn't do a whole lot, but look what happens. As n goes to infinity, this denominator blows up big. So this fraction goes to 0. Multiplied by 4, it still goes to 0. And the limit is 0. And of course, 0 is less than 1. And so by the ratio test, by the ratio test, the series converges. That's it. Oops. The series converges. Okay, and that, that probably feels a lot easier than the alternating series test here. All right, now, any time you can use the ratio test, technically you can use the root test, and it's kind of one of my little uh, guilty pleasures is to actually use the, the root test instead of the ratio test. So let's, let's do the root test here. So again, let's copy our, our series so we remember that. Uh, we had minus 4 to the n over n plus 2 factorial. And so to use the root test, I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term in the sequence. So this will be minus 4 to the n over n plus 2 factorial. All right. Let's see, we'll copy our limit. Now, the absolute value is going to hit both the numerator and the denominator. It's not going to do anything to the denominator since that's positive, but this minus 4 to the n will just become a 4 to the n. And this nth root, I can handle both the numerator and denominator separately. So I have the nth root of 4 to the n over the nth root of n plus 2 factorial. All right, now the numerator is, is pretty easy to handle n through to 4 to the n will just be a 4. And, well, let me just copy the bottom for now. So I have the nth root of n plus 2 factorial. So this is actually a really nice uh, situation because we, we wrote down a property in class which said if you have the nth root of n factorial, and n, adding a 2 here is not going to change that, and I take the limit as n goes to infinity, that this is equal to infinity. So we can use that here. So this denominator is going off to infinity. The numerator is just a constant 4. And so this limit will be 0. Again, 0 is less than 1. And so by the root test, the series converges. Awesome. So we've got three different ways we could have attacked this problem. Uh, if you come up with another way, put it in the comments. I'd love to see it.